Hello, everybody! It's your wonderful Wind Maid, your true ship servant, Chartreuse Ratsy, ever and always at your service. Today is January 10, and if you are not in the know or keeping up with the Odyssey Interactive and Omega Strikers Twitter accounts, they just posted a micro patch 10 minutes ago from this recording. So, I wanted for the first time to actually get my own first impressions and to help educate people a little bit more on what my thoughts are on the patch, whether it's a win loss, and just my own first reactions to this, since it is my daily content. So let's get into it. Hey gang, we are back for another micro patch for you. Despite most of the team working on a secret new project, we gotta keep the balance changes coming. Thank God. So on with Omega Strikers. Today's patch features a couple of rather large changes to Awakening and Maps, so let's begin. A lot of feedback from you about the map pool, so we decided to increase the active pool from 5 to 7. We know it can be a little annoying playing the same maps over and over, which could even be worse if your favorite map isn't in the rotation. We hope this change makes things a little more spicy for you. Maps back in, only going to the Atlas's lab. So they literally just reverted the changes. Oh wait, I need to slow down a little bit more for stream. They literally just reverted the changes from uh, last patch when they took them out and substituted Imies and Aten in. I'd say that's a W change. More variety, especially since we aren't getting too much more content, like actual meaningful new major content besides balance changes in. I think that's very much so a big dub. Even if I am a certified Odin's Village hater, I am a certified Atlas's Lub, uh, uh, Lub? Atlas's Lab lover. So I think that's just overall a great change. My own opinion on the map side. Strikers! No funny board pair. Estelle was just a bit weak. Piercing shot down by one second. Crystal Thorns bound by two seconds. Yeah, I can agree with that. Considering the pedigree of some maps, like Tycho really forcing you to have harder force strikers like Etz, Zen, uh, Etz, Zen, Julie, and then Kazan also just literally existing for big brawlers. Estelle just, I really felt like I never saw any pres a presence of her recently in season two, unless it was at the city, which only got rotated in last micro patch anyway. Fair enough. Trini now gets a little bit more time to aim her core in the right direction. Big finish gets 0.25 seconds more. W change, I feel. It can be a little awkward, I feel, sometimes, just like not getting the perfect direction, considering people are now used to her and being able to counterplay against her a little bit more. Juliet has stood atop the field for a while and has been pretty strong always. We're tuning her down just a touch to give her foes a fighting chance. Fiery Fist is up to 8 seconds. Power is down by about like 10 and 20 each. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, uh, it's like, like, well, 10, 20 each, so I, in raw power, but then by scaling by 5%, basically, by 10%, basically. Very fair, very fair. It still will stand that you can punch twice off of, uh, punch twice for every dash cooldown, but now I have to be a little bit more choosy, and, well, once again, Joey's always been nice, so any little touches. That'll, that'll bring her a little bit more in one and not make her as necessary considering how she is very much so a default ban for a lot of people and very understandable why. Kazan was kind of tricking too much as a goalie. Cricket Reverage uh, gets nerfed one second. You know what, Kazan could have gotten the touch a little bit more, but then again, he has been, you know, slowly tuned more like when Cricket Reverage became a white hit instead of a standard. One more hit on Cricket Reverage ain't going to hurt anymore considering that's his best core control tool anyway. And I did see a few Kazan goals actually popping up on my, my stream game, so makes sense. Mako! Mako with the coordinating team goes real crazy, too crazy one might say. I never got the chance to actually play in tournaments so I was 3 stats, I was always solo queue and still always am. But I do honestly see these changes immediately. 30% to 20 for haste and size granted, yeah 1000% because the fact that, that you know, and so what you, you can sometimes see, oh yeah, I'm getting the s speed buffs, I'm getting the size buffs. It's nice for a second here, but if you're actually able to call it out, I feel that goes kind of really hard, considering how good of a goalie Mako already is. Now I can use her ability more, but it's a little weaker against enemies and cores. Proximity drone goes from 12 to 10 seconds, but the power and the not bats weaker. Made sense to me, honestly, here. I feel like the biggest thing when it comes to now is that it's the effective counterplay of do you need to step on her drones early to deny their usefulness or do you just give up pressure on that side and try to control the core try to man mark the striker instead and i feel especially if like if i was going to touch now a little bit more because i did feel like i didn't see her as much even though you no know, like in uh what's his face in the current rotation of maps considering like you only get like one push or so against Etz for instance and Tycho or Clarion and then it's just weird and hard and I'm just like I've been dealing with way too much hard force strikers recently. I feel like a little bit more uptime and counterplay to it 
a little bit more uptime on her secondary uh, step in the right direction, considering it helps her keep up with the stagger game, since she is attrition healing, especially so. And once again, what would cooldown on that? It's a good, uh, it's a good tool for counter play because it's either she puts it on her feet and gets in immediately, or she puts it out for her teammates, which then gives it up to the liability of does the enemy give up their positioning to step on it or not? And toning down the actual damage values and core values on it is the right way to go about it, I think. W change. Rune. We hit Rune with a uh, core not fat nerf for a while ago, and he's still struggling to find his footing. We're pulling some of that bad. Fair enough. Yeah, because Rune's speed honestly wasn't the best necessarily. Like, uh, the core speed, unless, of course, he had Hotshot or 1 2. And it kind of struggled for setting up sometimes, unless you exclusively were running Sweat Kits, which. More often than not, you will, but I do see rune cheesing with pummels enough, you know? Or even for me, I run Vicious in the current meta of Bruisers and Hard Forcers, so I don't die. <laughs> uh, Shadow Swap as well, also got the same thing, just reversion, so yeah. Very fair, very fair. Keep him in line a little bit more, considering how other creation strikers like Juno are still... I wouldn't say, like, necessarily better, because I don't know the exact comp meta. Like, at least, like, from my experience online, Rune takes a lot more effort to set up than Juno, who gets a little bit more easier time. Ets! You should nerf it by 2 seconds, so I have something in common with Bellringer. We're both 10 seconds. Bellringer goes from 8 to 10 seconds. 1 second nerf... Eh... Uh, I mean... I... It, it exists. I'll, I'll, I'll be more wary... I'll, I'll hold out a lot more of my... At Slander until I see the other gear changes or whatever. We'll just see how things go. Zentaro, despite the manatees pitching above to Zentaro's primary, we think these changes will appropriately help him out. Oni's blade goes down five seconds, IA rest goes down two seconds. Fair enough. Zen's still very much so like overshadowed by you know, at Julie for hard forcing and then Kazan for attrition brawling that he really doesn't see as much play, considering uh Considering he's kind of the weird mess between being a good bruiser and a good core controller, thanks to his passive and his ultimate as well. I feel like, especially the thing that I don't see out of Oni's Blade enough, is people actually using it for the evasive properties. They're just using it, like, in the corners or just for raw damage. So I feel like that cooldown will incentivize people a little bit more on that end. I think that's a good change, even though I also hate <laughs> uh, Zentaro. Alright, Gear and Awakenings. Let's go over this real quick. We are reevaluating our Awakening Balance methodology, and as a result, we got a ton of changes in the section. Since these changes are pretty fresh and different, we'll be keeping a close eye on how these changes pan out and are ready to follow up if needed. Built Diff. At a mere 25% size, the size of Awakening felt a little puny at the moment. We think that these size options may have been unfairly nerfed just because they are generally good pits as opposed to being more specialized. We're going to beef them up a bit. 25 to 30%. So. Fair enough. Size is still one of the most important. Uh, it's still one of the most important. Uh, it's his face traits to always consider, and it really does. Ch it really, it really does change how certain strikers want to play the game itself. So I feel like it's a really, really good idea to keep indexing more into that idea on what, uh, like on what you might want to build your path towards. And I can, I can like powerhouse fortunes exist for goalies, then. Uh, then you have, uh, what's his face? Uh, yeah, you have Powerhouse Pauldrons for Doleys. Then you have, oh, sorry, Big Fish, which did get its size nerf a, while, while, a little while ago. And then both did get its size nerf. I think that's totally fair to revert the changes a little bit more. But I do fear it might push the agenda more on the Hard Forcers. But once again, holding my reservations until I read the rest of this patch, yeah? Cast to last. Buff sauce debuff duration has proven to be a very powerful stat on strikers that you don't utilize it well. So much that strikers who have used it best have seen their performances with and without their Star Awakenings diverge more than we'd like. This patch will see a big hit to cast Boss and Chrono to try to remedy this. This is a relatively large change, so we'll keep an eye on both users. Buff duration to 40, creation duration to 40. I think this is a very interesting change, and personally, I am all for it. Considering how, for cast to last, a lot of people uh, a lot of the strikers that will utilize it the best were only using it for the buff debuff duration. So that would be Etz for his Etz Maximus, that would be Octavia for Flow State, that would be Kai for Blazing Pace, and you only used it for the buff debuff. And it was really just second fish, second fiddle, last pitch, 
Fortration Strikers if Manu or, or Time Wars Trader was on the field. I think this brings this a little bit more in line and makes it, once again, not as high as a priority pitch. I do understand the reason and I think it's great because one, it plays to the rune agenda. You get, buff deep, uh, you get buffs from, haha. Uh, you get the debuff from Banish, you get the extended creation duration. But, but me meme aside, I think this is a really good change considering how exaggerated one effect of it was and how un impressive the other effect was. It's like the fight or flight syndrome. You use it a lot of the time for budget switch kits, but then not a lot, uh, it's like, uh, a lot of people use it for budget switch kits or to make their switch kits even better if you're a speed striker or a speed forward, but then you never see the other side unless you're already in Dead into like Stagger Swagger or something. I think this is a good change overall for Cast All Ast. Chrono, as stated, 30 to 20%. Fair enough too, it's already a big 3 trait of Ariel's Chrono Super Surge, so it really has inherent value, and Chrono just already gave it a little bit more than it really needed at times. See the Octavia example already, for or the Chai example already, as my main stitcher points on that. Demo! People were demonstrating more than just bears with this awakening, they have to get a permit if they want to keep it up. Cooldown from 6 to 3? Understandable? I feel like this can make demo feel a little bit more underwhelming, but the thing people have to forget is that for, like, if you're comparing it on a map like Aten City, it's gonna feel underwhelming because there's only the one barrier, but if you're playing with it, uh, but if you're playing on, like, Demon Dice or, like, Clarion or just any map with two barriers, and considering in rotation right now, we have Aten and Aimee with one barrier, and then everything else has two barriers, the fact is, you can easily still snowball that advantage so fast. So this means you have to actually keep your core control uh, after you get the barrier and wait that maybe extra second or two before demo gets all of your abilities up, which I think is a good change considering how fast the snowball can be. Because some strikers, like Rasmus with demo, goes so hard because he gets the extra size for whiplash and pendulum swing, and then you just literally burn all your abilities at, at round start. If you get the if you get the demo prod, well. It's all over. It feels right for strikers like that. So I think this is a good change overall. Because you're still getting the size. Because, like, main thing is, that's still a secondary effect. You are still getting size with demo, and then you're also getting CDR. Yeah, that kind of goes wild. I think it's good. It should feel bad, but I think it's good. It's a special, similar to size awakenings. Might have been nerfed too much, so we're putting a bit more of a smile to a happy star's face. 25 to 30, fair change. This is uh, like three versions right before, so yeah, it's nothing too much to note. Extra special is going to be extra special. You're just going to have to be more cognizant of it and maybe want to deny it more, especially if you see like an Aimee with it or like a Dubu goalie. Just being more aware of that. Fight or flight. I still think this should be f called fight and flight. Speed boost from 15 to 75%. Wow, it's higher budget switchets. I guess I can see that. Gloss chain and power per stat, 6 to 5, fair enough. One funny thing I've been seeing a lot recently is comparing Spark of Strength to Gloss Cannon and for, or Spark of Speed versus Gloss Cannon for stacking versus immediate value. And I feel like especially so, like the speed for Gloss Cannon is where it's really at. The power is just an added bonus. And it can feel really, really bad for certain strikers. So like Luna Goalie, for instance. The speed helps her out tremendously considering she's running a jet button and not momentum boots. So that way she can help her offensive frontline, but then you just get hit with a missile, uh, with, yeah, with a whammy missile or a crater from across the map, and it's like, oh, what counterpoint was there to do? I have to hit her from all the way across the pitch to make her lose all 20, 30 of her power? I can't do that, so I'm just always going to be taking 130 power crater hits. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pointing out friends chases, but you're seeing where this slope can go to, to where it can become a little unanswered sometimes, and I think that's like, it's the smallest number change, but that can go from like, you know, 30 power, it's like the difference of like 5 to 10 power, which can matter. Nice Edge power granted 40 to 30, tuning down the Brawling Awakenings, I do kind of see that a little bit, fair enough. Powerhouse, not Meeple put on Powerhouse pauldrons, but we're super OP, we saw it though, we saw it. Yes, a lot of goalies have been taking Powerhouse re recently. And it's because with that hard force meta, it helps you deal with your Etsis, with your Juliets. Dubu's take it not only because it gives you the extra size, of course, but because the extra power on Somersault means you can actually battle and brawl back against those offensive strikers. Same with Mato, you get a little bit extra size for your drum and bass, you get a little bit uh, on the core control side, you get extra size for your drum and bass, 
you get a little bit extra size for when you're sw uh, for when you're ending it and doing the recast on it and everything like that or so. Helps out your hitbots when you get your passive charged up for that little extra hit and brawling people out a little bit more. It's been great. So size going down, understandable, keeps it in line with the other size awakenings. And also the power going down a little bit. Like I said, it's it's a bra it's like I immediately just think of Dubu Goey with that, because some just like you literally can just like one tap some people if you have enough uh, if you have another awakening with powerhouse and somebody like trying to hard like the Julian half health hard forcing somersault bamboozle maybe even tofu fortress preemptive where you hit them twice and then they're already staggered out it can be a side problem but i think the size is still the biggest thing though with it so good change prime time similar to size and awakenings and extra special we think the extra ability chains awakenings were nerfed a bit too much as their general utility bringing them back hit reduction from 10 to 5 percent Let's see if there's... Okay, so there is Rapid Fire here. Okay, fair enough. I was about to say, if Rapid Fire isn't touched, I think this is a L change, but actually the fact that Rapid Fire is being toned down as well, I think this is fine enough. Hit reduction 10 to 5%. This will just, you know, like, some abilities won't be able to kill as often still. So, like, e like even then, 5% is enough to where the hit reduction means you won't be able to not back people enough from, like, a pendulum swing at the midfield orbs or something like that, or... For instance, or like a glitch pop, like going for a weird cheeky angle. So it's impactful enough to where it can actually deny you some of your edge kill options while not immediately devaluing the fact that it's still two primary tasks. Twitch strike, making Twitch strikes quicker again. Why? 15 to 20%, like, hmm. It's still a fine awakening, and the fact that I only see Eds taking one second to Bellringer, I don't like this, but then again, Cast got. Cuts, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Rapid fire was always good. 40 to 33 percent. Yeah, no, it it's really oppressive, considering how like once again, prime time rapid fire. The times that you do get it, or even just rapid fire by itself, it some abilities are two second cooldowns. I had a vice video to where I got it just this past week to where I got prime time and rapid fire. Prime time did nothing for the CDR, but I basically had power cord literally every two seconds off cooldown, and it was a nightmare for the enemy team to deal with. Making it so that your cooldown is like halved is good, but making it so that your cooldown can basically be like a third of what the original uh, original size was, especially if you get just a single CDR trade along with rapid fire. Yeah, it kind of goes wild. And finally, twin drive. Similar size awakenings, extra special prime time. You think the extra ability changes were nerfed a bit too much for the utility, so bringing them back. Cooldown increased by 7.5 to 5%. Uh, no, you explained the logic with that or so. Mm, I think the twin drive having a longer cooldown is more impactful than the hit on prime time, in my opinion. So I, I they're bringing them back to where they were, but I, f hmm, I'm just gonna have to, so you have to play the game to see how it goes, because any little bit of CDR reduction can throw off uh, uh, cooldown timing, so us counting from your allied or your enemy team and can really mean the difference between knowing oh does this Juliet have dash and punch up at the same time yes no I can force this way I can't force this way up to pass I can't pass this way so twin drive actually having a big cravat with yes you can have a big impact movement secondary twice but you have to be a lot more choosy with it you can't actually just be as willy-nilly with it considering there's no rapid fire for secondary I, I, I understand the logic of bringing it back in line, but it makes me think a little bit more than on once we see the meta game for this upcoming micro patch, what the next patch will be like, and if they want to diverge more into specialized traits and everything like that or so. That is the end of the patch notes though, so overall, I do think this patch is pretty good in a lot of aspects, quite frankly. We got seven maps in rotation, so that's actually pretty nice, all things considered, making sure that in the future, when we do rotate in, like, Inkies and Obscura once again or so, things aren't going to be as shoehorned and you're not going to get as many people just being like, I'm not playing this game again because I hate Inkies, or just because like, I hate playing on Inkies, or I hate playing on Obscura, and I have a 1 in 5 chance, making it just more varied, and once again, especially with end of general service for Omega Strikers, balance patches aside, that's still pretty nice, all things considered. So, great change there. 
most balance changes I do agree with, though I feel like some characters could have been hit a little bit more. But there's a difference between my opinion and what I think the balance actually should be. I would, in my opinion, say Etz needs to be touched more, but I also do think it was also predicating off of big um, awakenings, which the cast toss and chrono boost could down his thoughts a good amount, quite frankly. But we'll we'll just have to see how it goes. But uh, otherwise, like, in terms of, like, most, uh, in terms of, like, all the striker uh, balances and everything like that, I do think, like, the map changes are great, striker changes are great, gear and awakening stuff, I do like the size changes, I do love the cast toss and chrono boost changes. I'm not as sure on the prime time and twin drive stuff, like, print, uh, prime time twin drive, it's a special I'm a little bit more settled on because it's immediate CDR at the start of the round, that's a win condition, but prime time and rapid, uh, prime time and secondary drive having their secondary effects be nerfed or to, uh, or to be buffed a little bit and the fact that it doesn't uh, nerf the player who pits them as much gets a little bit of a question mark for me but once again I would just have to actually play a little bit more and see how it goes but if I had to give an immediate day one opinion on it I, th I think that's I think that's a loss I think that's a bad change considering how like, you're always going to be scaling, and you could easily build towards another awakening for your uh, for your primary, another awakening for your secondary. We have fight or flight being buffed a little bit more, so twin drive might, I'd say twin drive might have a little bit more help there. Even if rapid fire got hit, prime time and rapid fire is still in the awakening rotation, so that's still a thing. So we'll just have to see how things go on that end, yeah. But that's my opinions on the patch today. So. If you have any opinions of your own, please do leave a comment. And as always, it's been your wonderful wind maid, your cruise ship servant, Sharky Trotsy, ever and always at your service. And thank you for joining me on my rundown today of the January 10 micro patch. Hope to see you on the core strike field soon, strikers.